Hello friends, and welcome to my new video, in which I'll tell you some amazing stories. But before we begin, please subscribe to my channel and hit the like button on this video. Also, don't forget to write your thoughts about these stories in the comments. Let's get The first story is Dealing with unscrupulous customers in the repair business. Well, friends, I am a certified machinist and welder. I perform all tasks including fabrication, prototyping, and repair. I receive mostly repair tasks, which is fortunate because there's a lot of mining, logging, and other industrial activity where I reside. I use a system. If something is sent to me for repair, please give me a call first. I was still relatively young when this had happened. I had just built my final shop, which I'm currently in, and I'd only been in for maybe a year. The broken part should be returned to me, preferably not the full machine, as I have only been doing this for like 8 years altogether. I got sent an entire frigging horizontal Mobark tree grinder now off of, on a quick tangent. I rent out shop space in my shop. I have a very strong focus on safety. I don't care if they are renting. If I see one wrong, I will kick someone out of my shop and I won't be responsible for cleaning up the mess you left behind after you lost an effing limb. One piece of machinery or equipment that truly freaks me out is any kind of wood chipper, stump grinder, or tree grinder. Something that makes a grinding sound? I don't want to be close to it if it has power. Thus, the Mobark tree grinder. Utterly enormous, first of all. Secondly, I was clueless about the issue. In addition, I had nothing with which to transport it. The trailer had to be dropped off there by the company's driver. No contact information, no description of what went wrong with it. That item was just left there for possibly a week. I finally get a call at last, and it proceeds as follows. Me. How are you? Caller. Caller. Hi, I sent one of my stump grinders there for maintenance. Is it fixed now? Me. Oh, really? No, I don't have anything that can move it, therefore it's still on the trailer bed. S secondly, I have no idea what went wrong with it because I didn't get a call. Caller. Whoa, that's odd. Me. What's odd? If I don't know what's wrong with it, I can't fix it. Caller. Alright, so? Me. Well, then... Perhaps you could explain what's wrong with it rather than coming across as somewhat antagonistic here. Caller. It needs new teeth on the rotor. Continues spitting logs out again. Me. Alright, are those something you want made or have you already bought them? Caller. I only need them installed and you can get them from X. I'll get a man to come out there carrying the keys. Me. Alright then. I'll fax or email you the contract to sign. It should take about five days to complete once it's signed, but I'll phone you when it's ready. Caller. Okay. Okay. So I got to work on this ridiculous thing. To help me disassemble this ridiculous device and remove this terrible rotor drum, I had to call both my dad and my cousin. Like, right now. The teeth sank in deeply. This complete moron must have had one of his men grind the teeth to shape after building up the weld. As good as new, yeah, yeah right. They were fused directly to the rotor. I was able to remove all of these stupid teeth by gouging them quite hard. For those of you who are unaware, gouging is a technique used to remove weld, thus caution is advised. Have you ever used copper clad gouging sticks? They're not inexpensive. A pack of 12 sticks will cost you like between 30 and 40 dollars, and they don't last very long. He had to have every tooth replaced. So I made a call to the man, told him that she was ready with brand new teeth fitted. Overall, I informed him that the cost would be 56 that Click. Hangs up. I give it another go. No response. The truck driver arrives two days later with an empty trailer, says he's here to pick up the tree grinder that enters my shop and begins to walk around it. I enter my workplace and glance around. Well, not being paid? I inform the driver that the equipment wasn't released since I haven't received payment. After the driver informed his employer of the situation, the boss man called me. Me. Hello? Boss man. 
Why won't you give me my equipment? Me. You still need to pay. Boss man. So you're taking my gear with you. How much money have you cost me? Do you know? Me. You've paid for your own carelessness in maintaining your machine. I haven't cost you any money. You agreed to a legally binding contract that expressly stipulates that the in-question object, item, or equipment will not be returned to the purchaser until payment is received. Boss man. You don't need any payment from me. You're running a week behind schedule. Me. All right, you do you. You sign that dotted line. And your machine stayed in my shop for a week because you didn't send me any information to work from. I'm not a week late. Boss man. My driver is taking that grinder. Me. I assure you, he's not. Boss man stops talking. When the driver returned the call, boss man instructed him to take the equipment. The driver said, You haven't seen this guy. I'm not doing anything like that. And I literally heard him say it. He wasn't paid by you. Make the man pay. They moved back and forth. So the driver departed. And three hours later, the driver returned with cops in tow. Police stated that there is nothing they can do to the driver after reviewing the contract. So the driver departed, returned the following day, without a trailer, and stated that the money was supposed to be sent. So I looked it over. No payment as of yet. I informed the driver. Nope. Nothing's changed at all. Now the driver was enraged. He called the boss man yelled at him and threatened to quit playing these pointless games. If he didn't pay, he would have to go home with two unpaid bills and hire a new driver. Boss man finally backed down and gave in. After assisting the driver with loading, he left. After about a month, another piece of equipment appears, a completely trashed stump grinder drum. The thing's completely welded and shredded like nobody's business and a small piece of paper with the words, needs repair, call blank, attached to it. Give the number a call. Boss man. Hello? Me. Oh no, God. I received an 18-inch drum from a stump grinder from you. Is that right? Boss man. Yes. Me. All right, you can instruct your driver to return and retrieve it. Boss man. What? Why? Me. I have zero interest in doing business with you after the last incident where I had to force payment out of you. You were always criticizing and insulting me. You can find another person to complete your repair. Boss man. You are the only person close. This was accurate. I was only two to three hours travel from his place of employment. Me. Well, before you tried to treat me like a fool and avoid paying me, you ought to have given that some thought beforehand. It's not my concern what you do next. Boss man. Do you know who I am? If I say f you, then no one will want to work with you. Me. No, and I, I truly don't care who you are. You are, at most, a man who attempted to defraud me. That's it. Boss man stops talking. His chauffeur returned. He informed me after he had loaded the drum once more. You know, you really inspired me. I guess I'm just going to give up on this and inform the boss that I'm tired of it. Which I answered, uh, to how many people has he done this before? The driver informed me that he had been obliged to pay $270,000 in overdue bills after being sued for them by the former shop owner. I now need a down payment, which will only be deducted from labor costs as a result of that incident. In fact, Bossman's business filed for bankruptcy in 2018, yet I still receive a lot of business. He now builds the exact equipment that he used to possess at the same company where my cousin works. Some advice for all of you. If you're running a business and you conduct any type of repair, fabrication, be it computers, cars, heavy gear, whatever, recognize the value of your time because someone will always attempt to take advantage of you just because they can. Refuse to put up with crap from anybody. There's a thin line separating professionalism and rudeness. If a client crosses it, respond to them professionally. Don't allow anyone to treat you or your art disrespectfully.
You didn't start a business to have fun. You did it to escape having to listen to other people give you commands. Lastly, establish a safety net. A formal agreement, contract, or something with a signature is necessary. Because in the absence of that one phrase in my contract, I would have been legally required to release the machine and fight him in court for money, which would have been an expensive and time-consuming process. Well, ladies and gentlemen, here we have the classic example of someone who gets an overinflated ego because of their position at work, making them think that they, for some reason, are just higher up in the human societal hierarchy, and that makes them better than everyone else. And at my word, no one will do business with you. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I'm sure you and your scumbag personality have so much weight on everyone else that would be doing business with an honest businessman like me. Sure, go for it. Anyway, personal rant aside, I think you did pretty much everything exactly as you should have here, OP. I mean, if you had taken the easy way out and given the machine back to him even though he hadn't paid you yet... I would have been very upset with you, <laughs> because that is not the right way to go about this. You deserve the money. He gave you the business, and he gave you a bunch of crap on top of that, so you definitely deserve at least this much money, if not a little additional compensation for being a professional despite having to work with such an a-hole. The next story is, HOA forbids me to be on this street. Since I use a wheelchair and have a service dog, I decided to buy a house. Living in an apartment is really hard if you use a wheelchair. When I was choosing a house, an important criterion for me was that the house was not in an HOA. According to the information that I knew, HOAs are almost always bad for wheelchair users. So I found a pretty good looking option and bought it very quickly. I lived a wonderful life. I breathed fresh air because I lived near the forest. But five years after this purchase, my neighbors decide to create an HOA. I was categorically against this HOA. I said that I would never take part in any of the affairs of this HOA. Well, they convinced me that everything would be great and that they would create the best conditions for people with disabilities in our neighborhood. But I didn't believe them. The chairman of the HOA was my worst neighbor who had been looking at me sideways for a very long time. I was sure that if I became part of the HOA, they would want to do everything to make me move out of the neighborhood. For some reason, I was sure that if I didn't sign the papers and didn't become part of the HOA, they wouldn't be able to torment me. Unfortunately, I was very wrong. The new chairman of the HOA did everything within his power to annoy me. One sunny day, I was strolling outside, being led by my service dog. This dog is my support and backbone. He understands me much more than anyone else, but I was approached by the chairman of the HOA, who said that I had no right to drive a wheelchair here, and especially with a dog. I told him, I can't walk here without a wheelchair and a dog, but he said that this road is the private property of the HOA which I refuse to join, so I have no right to use the privileges of the HOA. This guy said that if I didn't leave this street right now, I was going to be fined. I told him, I can't leave this street right now. My speed is clearly limited. Well, he said he didn't care about my speed and told me that I was going to be fined. When I got to my house, there was already a fine from the housing association lying on the door. I didn't care about the fine because I knew I wouldn't give him a cent. And I told myself that if I received at least one more fine from this HOA, that I would be suing them. A week later, I received another fine from the HOA. But this time, it was for not paying the previous fine. I wished myself luck and hired a lawyer. Together, we filed a lawsuit. 
It wasn't a very difficult case because the law clearly states that he has no right to do this. This guy showed the level of his intelligence by writing directly on the first fine who issued the fine and why it was issued. He stopped being the head of the HOA after the trial and was also fined $75,000. No one else had any complaints against me. The next story is Paint Guy vs. Walmart Woes. This happened approximately five years ago. I had a part-time job at an Ace Hardware store. Previous year, I had semi-retired and was looking for a part-time job to keep myself busy. After work, I went to my wife's place of employment, the nearby Walmart, to pick her up when she got off. Rather than wait in the car, I had gone into the store to pick up a few things. I was dressed in khakis, a light blue polo shirt with the large ace emblem on my left side chest, and black sneakers. Since I was a paint specialist, I wore colored polos rather than the traditional red ones that A staff wear. As I was driving by the hardware department headed towards the car area, I heard Ace is the place, which, when I looked over, came from, we'll call him Joe, a Wally World employee who was behind the paint desk. We knew one another since I knew Joe from when I went shopping with my wife. Joe was having some difficulties when attempting to assist one of his customers. I've worked in the paint, hardware, and home improvement industries for 38 years, and Joe was a really kind youngster who wanted to learn. Joe had worked in the hardware department area for about six months. Joe inquired if I might be of any assistance. The client posed his queries. I provided guidance on how to complete his project in addition to answers. And after receiving what he required, the customer thanked Joe and me and left. After expressing my gratitude, Joe asked if the wife would be leaving soon. I responded, about within 10 minutes. So after a little conversation, I went to the car to acquire the necessary wipers. Walmart has a small computer where you can enter all the details like make, model, etc. And it'll provide you with the necessary information. I heard the dreaded, Excuse me, as I was searching among the mess for another 21-inch wiper after finding one. When I turned to look, I saw the stereotypical Karen standing next to me. She was in her 40s, dressed too nicely to be shopping at Walmart, and had enough gold chains to make Mr. T envious. She had the Karen hairstyle and large sunglasses. Here's a list of every member of the cast. PG will be paint guy. Me, Karen, as the witch herself, Joe, as the good Walmart employee, CSM, one of the Walmart supervisors, WS, Walmart security, CP1, police one, and CP2, cop two. Karen, you helped that customer in paints so slowly, so now you're going to help me. My BMW needs wipers. PG, if you don't know how to use the computer here, I can show you. I'm trying to be kind. Karen. <laughs> well, you'll get them for me, no problem. You work in this garbage because of this, so you're going to perform your job. Me. I don't work here, lady. Karen. Uh, you certainly do. You're wearing their outfit, and you are assisting the man with the paints. Me, pointing at my chest pocket. Does this say Ace Hardware or Walmart? Karen ignoring what I'm pointing at. You will get me what I want, or I will get your manager and get you fired. I had had enough of her nonsense by then, so I turned, grabbed my second wiper, and began to go. That's when she begins to scream. Where in the world are you going anyway? Get back here! Where's your manager? I'm firing you! Shortly as her volcano lips released the word, I felt my hand seize my left shoulder and nails pierced my upper chest like a dagger. Note, I was diagnosed with sarcoma cancer in my upper left chest area back in 2001. There was only a thin layer of skin remaining after they removed all of the cancer, muscle, and any cushioning I may have had. I yelled as her claws dug into my skin, 
Grabbing her wrist with my right hand, I squeezed it firmly, yanking her hand away from me. Turning to face her, I pushed her away. She staggered back, bumping her butt into the counter. And now she's wailing that I attacked her while she sits on the ground. So Joe comes from around the island at this point. Joe heard the shout for a manager and security. My chest hurt, so I opened my polo and checked it with my right hand. And I was indeed bleeding. She had torn my skin. So I reached for some Kleenex to place there. The CSM and WS arrived at that moment. CSM. What the heck is going on here? Karen. Your employee attacked me! Karen was assisted by the WS and CSM in standing up. CSM. What worker? Him? Giving a gesture toward Joe. Karen. No, him! Pointing at me. CSM. He's not employed here. According to his shirt, he works at Ace Hardware. Karen. I want him out of here. I want him taken into custody, and I'm going to file a lawsuit. The WS came over and started talking to me in the interim. I informed him of what had happened, and I believed that the police ought to be called. He also phoned the EMTs, as the tissue I was using was now blood-soaked. Karen is still yelling. Karen. I want him out of here. I want him taken into custody. He attacked me. His attempt to rape me. So she just continued this nonsense without stop. She continued this nonsense without stopping the entire time. Along with the security guard and the loan manager, she was hollering down the aisle at me. Joe was instructed by the WS to get me a chair and a bunch of towels and make an attempt to contact my spouse as well. Approximately 10 minutes later, CP1 and CP2 arrived. Karen continued to add crimes against me when CP1 went to speak with her. It appears that in addition to beating her up, I also attempted to her and took her handbag. So CP2 stopped by to chat with me. My wife and the EMTs had joined me by now. My upper chest was covered with blood. My shirt was off, my khakis were beginning to get stained. Trails also trickled down my stomach. Karen was with CSM and WS. My wife and the EMTs were with me. The police were chatting with one another in the middle of the island. CP1 requested to view the security footage over from WS, so the two left together. The mere mention of surveillance cameras made Karen very quiet. The EMTs were about to leave and offered to transport me to the hospital, but I refused. This was after approximately 10 minutes. WS and CP1 returned and approached me. Karen's beaming expression, which suggested that she had won, I responded yes when the police asked if I wanted to file charges in a hushed voice. They both turned to face Karen, who cried out, Arrest him, not me! as the one policeman removed his handcuffs from his waist. She then hurled her purse at CP1, struck him in the face, and turned to flee, but CP2 performed a flying tackle, knocking her to the ground and placing her in handcuffs in less than a minute flat. She was accused of resisting arrest, violence, making a fake police report, and some other offenses. For several weeks, I had to wear a sling over my arm to allow it to heal. While it did, I had to wear this gooey, covered gauze. You know, my feelings are pretty brief on this one. You deserve that, Karen. Play stupid games, win stupid prizes. Maybe use this time that you get to spend in jail alone to ponder over not being such an absolute clown the next time you're out in society. Should do you some good and help you uh, stay out of the silver bracelets next time. These stories generally are just becoming more and more prevalent, and unfortunately, I'm not really aware of any real deterrent, right? Like, these situations, they always result in having the police be called or some sort of security be called, and it turns into some whole, like, long-form dramatic encounter. And I really just don't know the solution, right? Like, if you were OP in this situation, how do you handle this differently that 
changes the outcome from where it was headed. I mean, maybe the best we can do is be prepared, but, you know, I'd like to think that there's a better alternative. If any of you out there have an idea, let me know. Thanks for watching. Just a reminder, subscribe, like, and comment. See you soon.